So you wanna hit a thousand subscribers, but you're starting with zero. What do you do? That's the question we'll answer in this video. My name is Woody and this is Grown Up Pains where we talk about all things business and personal growth. We recently hit a thousand subscribers, so it's still fresh in my mind on how to get there and my goal is to share that with you and hopefully save you some time along the way. In this video series, we'll be going over how to start a YouTube channel, how to monetize it as a side hustle, and everything you need to know to get your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. If that sounds like something you're into, please consider gently booping the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on future videos. So the first thing about how to start a YouTube channel with zero subscribers is that everybody starts with zero. Let's start by taking a look at your favorite YouTuber's oldest videos. If you click over to their channel, go to the videos section, and then click on oldest, you'll see a few things. The first thing you'll notice is that they're not always the best quality. The next thing you might notice is that they don't have a lot of views compared to some of their newer videos that have been more established. And a third thing you might notice is that they probably started with a totally different niche or topic than what they're doing right now. I mean, think about it. They've been at it for a long time and they've probably gotten significantly better, especially with each repetition. Every time they make another video, they worked on something, they improved something, they made it just a little bit better. You know, people say 1% better every time. So they kept iterating over and over and over and over and they got better and better and better and better. Plus that's that many more at bats. So it's possible for them to, you know, hit the algorithm and get more views that way. But they all started with zero and you can too. The next thing I want you to look at is their total number of videos. This can be found kind of uh, at the top of their channel, pretty much right under their name. When you see how many videos your favorite YouTuber has posted and looked at their oldest videos and saw how many years ago it was, you realize something. They've been at this for a long time and you have not and that's okay. You just gotta get started. And I know the idea of comparison is kind of a taboo topic, especially right now, but just in general, you don't wanna compare yourself to something unrealistic, but it is okay to compare if it motivates you. You know, don't compare yourself to where your favorite YouTuber is now and think, I'll never get there. Compare yourself to where they started. That's why we're, we're diving into their page and we're looking that far back. You wanna see how old their videos were, how bad their videos were, how low views their videos were, and how many times they had to do this to get good. Uh, hopefully that motivates you and does not discourage you because it is a long road if you want to get ahead on YouTube. It's a lot of a lot of work you got to put into the scripting, the thumbnails, um, the you know the ideas, the topics of the videos, uploading keywords, optimization, and just trying to stay consistent with it. Don't want to overwhelm you, and this should not be a reason to stop and shut down right now. But just knowing that going into it could be a motivating factor. It gives you the permission to fail right now, the permission to just upload something to get started, and then work on uploading the next thing, creating the next video, and making it just a little bit better than the first one. And while we're still looking at your favorite YouTuber's channel, realize that they started before they knew what they were. They learned along the way, and you will too. You've gotta to commit to a process. You can't just get the end result of having a million subscribers and having a passive income without actually putting in the work. So learn to embrace the process, find joy in the creation and the doing of the process. You know, find joy in working the process because that is the bulk of what it is. And the payoff will come later on. And the next thing you need to know to start a YouTube channel with zero subscribers is to rip off the Band-Aid. Record, inspect, and press upload. So let's talk about record. You wanna grab your smartphone, I'm hoping that you have one if you're watching YouTube, and if you don't, that's gonna be the first thing you need to try to get. But grab your smartphone, and if you don't own a tripod, make one. I mean, literally just lean the phone up against a stack of books, and the next step is to find a presentable background. I hope I did okay here. Um, you basically want to remove anything that you don't want in the final product, okay? Like any personal identifiers. You probably want some amount of anonymity when you're posting and sharing content to the world, um, not to completely hide who you are, but you do wanna make sure that people can't find where you are or find ways to harass you. So once you've gotten your phone and made your makeshift tripod and you found a presentable background to point the phone at, press record say hi to the world and tell them that this is your first video. Once we've recorded, we wanna move on to inspect. Step one of inspect is to review the tape. Can they see you? Can they hear you? Good. And while you're reviewing the tape, don't be too hard on yourself. This is only round one. And for your first video, I would just say, don't even worry about editing it. 
there will be plenty of time for learning that skill later. And that's a topic that we'll cover in a future video, which I might link up here, 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 here. I don't know, one of these places. So after we've recorded and we've inspected, the last step of ripping off the Band-Aid is to press upload. So in order to upload your video, uh, you will need a Google or a Gmail account to start out. And uh, if you don't have one, it's free, it's easy to make. Uh, we'll include that on the video of how to create a channel, which will be a separate video. We'll link that one right here. The next thing I would say is don't stress too much over the title. Calling it my first YouTube video, I think is perfectly fine. If your creative juices are flowing, feel free to let them flow. But my first video will get the job done. And I would say skip the thumbnail and the keywords for now. You can always add a thumbnail later on if you really want to, but YouTube is just gonna go ahead and uh, pick a slide from somewhere in the video and make that the thumbnail. If you don't like the one it picks, I think it gives you a total of three options or the option to upload a custom thumbnail later on. So don't worry about the thumbnail. Don't worry about the keywords. Don't worry about any of the extra stuff. Um, just smash the upload button. Ta-da! You have just shared something with the world and you've taken your first step out of the consumer category and into the creator category. You should be proud of yourself. So now that we've realized that everybody starts with zero and you've ripped off the Band-Aid, what's next? My personal recommendation is to consume content related to the skill you want to learn, much like you're doing right now. And this gives you a chance to learn as you go. So let's start by talking about productive procrastination. There's all kinds of ways to consume content. One of my favorites is books, but you may be thinking to yourself, I don't have time to read books. I'm busy. I've got a full-time job. I have a family. I have children. I have to work out in the morning. I have to go to bed at a certain time. You might be thinking all kinds of crazy things. And they're probably all true. But consider audiobooks. So I found an Audible membership on a deal and started downloading all the books I've been wanting to read for the last several years and just started listening to them. Listen to them while you're doing mundane tasks, listen to them in spare pockets of time, and we will get to pockets of time in just a second. Another way to procrastinate productively would be instead of just turning on TV or Netflix and watching another drama or series that's on, consider seeking out something that is educational, that's still content so you can just consume it you know if if you're stressed you've had a long day you you know just want to watch something consider seeking out content that might teach you something that could help with your youtube goals and i would also say find and exploit pockets of time remember you don't have to finish the book or the chapter or the video all in one sitting you can always pick back up where you left off come up with a, a good little system for remembering where you stopped if you're doing anything on a phone like an audiobook or <laughs> or a video, it usually keeps your place. But if it's a paper book, you know, just grab a pencil and put a little mark in there. It's not gonna hurt anything. And that way you'll be, you know, fold the corner, whatever you gotta do. That way when you get back to it, you know where you left off. And while we're consuming content that helps us grow and learn, when it came to getting started on YouTube, for me personally, following channel creators like Ali Abdal and Think Media or the Think Media podcast with Sean Cannell uh, helped me out immensely. Keep in mind, a lot of the creators that you follow might try to sell you courses. And most of the content in the courses can be found for free on their channel if you just give it enough time and watch or listen to enough videos. I'll say this about courses. Courses cost money, but they do save time. They can be a very organized way to get all of the information you're looking for in a much faster dose. But if you are not quite at the level where you're ready to spend money on this yet, you're just kind of flirting with the idea of starting a channel, I would say don't get lured into that until you've gotten to some larger point of commitment and maybe just consume the content that they put out there because they put amazing free content out there and a lot of the content that they talk about in their courses is what they're making YouTube videos about. And another tip I'd recommend if you're trying to find content that will help you grow is to listen to podcasts. If you're not already, uh, seek some out. There are plenty of good podcasts. The Think Media Podcast and Ali Abdallah has a podcast. Diary of a CEO is another one that's really good. There's a podcast out there for just about every niche, every topic, and everything you could imagine. So I would say seek out the podcasts that talk about what you want to learn about. If you're here to learn about YouTube, I would definitely recommend 
um, Ali Abdal and the Think Media Podcast. I would also say making the investment into something like YouTube Premium or Audible might seem like a lot, but considering what you could get out of it, you have the ability to pop your earbuds in, lock your phone screen, put it in your pocket, and then just absorb all kinds of content while you go about your day doing the things that don't require your full attention, you know, the mundane tasks. For me, listening while driving or doing dishes or folding laundry, those are kind of the best things to do while listening to audiobooks or podcasts. But I will say that anything that requires too much brain power will like pull me away from whatever I'm trying to like get engaged with, whatever I'm trying to learn. Um, surprisingly, I cannot grocery shop at all while listening to anything, any audiobook, any podcast, any YouTube video. I've tried even putting just like something on that I don't really care about at all, but I'm like, hopefully I'll pick up like 10% of it in the background while I grocery shop. And I just can't like think about prices and is the produce fresh or not, or do I need to put that apple back or not <laughs> while listening to this stuff. I, I just can't do the two things at once, uh, which should not shock my wife. And if you're savvy about it, there are ways to enjoy these subscriptions without breaking the bank or even necessarily paying the full price for them. Uh, but I will not get into that here. I'll just say that Reddit is an excellent resource. Thank you for watching. And if you got value out of this video, please smash the like button. It helps other people discover the video that are looking for the same kind of stuff that you're looking for. Again, please consider subscribing to the channel and check out links in the description for a few things that we talked about in this video. Thanks, and I'll see you in this next one.